On December 30th, 1935, an audience composed largely of curious fellow professionals, critics, and concert regulars came to Town Hall in New York to hear a recital by a completely unknown contralto named Marian Anderson. Waiting for the artist's usual entrance, a walk across the stage, they saw the curtains part, revealing the singer slightly against the piano. The polite ripple of... Then she sang. The response was immediate. It grew with each number. It climaxed when the audience learned after the first half of the concert that the singer had broken her foot two days before while returning to her native land from Europe, but had refused to cancel the engagement. Had they known the reasons why, their admiration might have been even greater. The journey to Town Hall had been a long one to Marian Anderson, longer than the distance between continents. In beginnings of Philadelphia, where she was born, with its maze of the neighbor's doorstep she had scrubbed from the age of six to earn her first spending money, of the storefront church where she had sung in the choir. There were memories of indebtedness along the way to many people, to her mother, Mrs. Anna Anderson, the former Virginia school teacher who had taken in washing to support Marion and her sisters after their father had died to the good people in the congregation of the Union Baptist Church, 
who collected pennies, nickels, and dimes for what they called a fund for the future of Marian Anderson. And to the great American impresario S. Hurok, who after hearing her sing in Paris, refused to share her uncertainty about how she weaved back home and invited her to return under his management. All this and more were the elements that fused into the deep spiritual fire which the audience sensed that night at town hall. day, the New York Times added a new name to the roster of great American artists. The name has burned brightly ever since the marquees of concert halls in every great city of the world. Marian Anderson has sung at the White House and before kings and queens. She has received awards from civic foundations, nations, universities. And from the city of Philadelphia, where she scrubbed steps in the poor district as a child, the highest honor awarded to its most distinguished citizen each year, the Bach Award of $10,000, which she used to establish a fund to help other singers. But of all the tributes, perhaps none so turned out of 75,000 people who crowded before the Lincoln Memorial in Washington to hear her sing. and none so professionally heartwarming as the words of Arturo Toscanini when he said, a voice like yours is heard once in a hundred years. No one who has been to an Anderson concert can forget her compelling presence from the second she appears on stage and the complete command of the audience that comes to her without any conscious effort to achieve it.
right in his hands is got you and me, brother. In his hands he's got the whole world in his hands. Oh, he's got everybody here. In his hands he's got everybody. In his hands he's got everybody here, right? In his hands he's got the whole world in his hands. Frequently, at the conclusion of crucifixion, the audience has responded with a rare tribute of silence. 
Carl Van Vechten wrote, many a listener comes away from one of her recitals uncertain whether he has enjoyed an aesthetic or a religious experience. So completely fused are the two ideals in this great artist's own nature. This is Mariana, Miss Ann Holm in Connecticut. Here among the rolling hills, the trees, and the land she loves deeply, she rests between the strenuous seven-month tours, which may average 60 concerts and cover 20 to 30,000 miles of travel. Asked once how she felt about these by an interviewer, she answered, we are interested in singing so that somebody will leave feeling a little better than when he came. There's relaxation in the work at Mariana too, the satisfying small activities of rural living, weeding the vegetable patch or sewing the new curtains for spring. Her active, energetic mind constantly finds new hobbies and interests. She's been experimenting with upholstering and has become a very proficient amateur photographer, processing the many shots she makes while on tour. But always she manages to return to her favorite hobby, puttering with a new recipe in the spacious country kitchen. And finally, all too soon, the moment when Mariana becomes a place of serious work as another tour is scheduled to begin. It's heralded with the arrival of Franz Rupp, who has accompanied Miss Anderson for the past 10 years. Here, in the quiet privacy of her studio, they'll carefully select the repertoire for the tour. And then every number, whether new or sung many times before, will be rehearsed painstakingly.
After weeks of intensive work, the first concert date looms up. Her seven bags are packed. They'll contain no elaborate wardrobe. Instead, her sewing machine, a portable radio, typewriter, and several cooking utensils. Between the endless train rides, a little of the unfinished work of Mariana will be continued. But always the great devotion will be those fulfilling and intense moments when she lifts her voice in song. <laughs> 